Sometimes when we read the Bible, the second coming of Christ seems to be obvious and everybody sees it. Everybody knows it's coming. But then sometimes it seems secretive. It speaks about it as being uh, secretive. Jesus said that when he came for his church, he would arrive unexpectedly. The world will have no idea that such an event is about to occur. Tonight we're going to begin a series of messages about the rapture of the church. We're going to talk uh, tonight, uh, we'll call this part one, um, the rapture. You say, well, why are you going to talk about the rapture, Dave? Because I've heard a lot of people uh, speaking negatively about this subject. I've told you before about the man who came to my store and was standing there talking to me. And I, and I mentioned to him, well, Jesus is coming soon. And he told me, no, he's not. I said, yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. We went back and forth. Pretty soon, I ran the man off, actually. Uh, I realized he was a wicked servant that says the Lord delays his coming. And uh, Jesus is coming again. And the second coming of Christ is an important thing for us to think about and keep in mind. And so what I'm going to share with you tonight may be uh, uh, just a, a reminder for those of you that are uh, already aware of the rapture and what it means. But we're recording this message and we're going to put it out for other people that may not know. And so follow along with me and let's look at the subject of the rapture of the church. Now the rapture refers to the time when Jesus will come without warning to take away his church from the earth. Now, this is important to keep this in mind. He comes without warning at the rapture. After the rapture, the Lord will pour out his wrath upon this sinful world during a seven-year period of time that the Bible calls the Great Tribulation. Now, there are many professing Christians who claim an ignorance of the rapture, or they say that they're not certain when it will uh, come, if it will precede the great tribulation, and they say they don't know where they really stand on the issue of the rapture. They're kind of embarrassed of it, <laughs> some people. And so they're uh, uh, a little soft on it. But I want to tell you something. There is no excuse for ambiguity, ambiguity concerning the issue of the rapture. The Bible is clear on the matter. And we are capable of studying the subject thoroughly. And we're going to try to do that over the next few weeks. Now, <clears throat> the view a person holds on the rapture is important because the view you hold about the rapture will have a significant impact on your life and your ministry. In 1 John 3, 3, we read this. And every man that hath this hope, what is that? The hope of the soon and imminent return of the Lord. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. You see, it really depends what you think about the rapture because if you are expecting Jesus to come at any moment, you know what you're going to do? You're going to be ready if you believe that. <clears throat> now, I have to emphasize here that the rapture is distinct from the second coming of Jesus. Some people are confused on this issue. 
The second coming of Jesus is when the Lord will fully and finally establish God's kingdom on this earth. But the rapture occurs prior to the second coming. It is the event where the church will be caught up into heaven to be with the Lord. My little song says it this way. I'm just a pilgrim and a stranger, just traveling through this world below. I've got a mansion up in heaven, and someday soon I'm going to go. I'm going up, 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 when I hear that trumpet sounding, going up, 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 in the twinkling of an eye, and I will meet the Lord and the saints in clouds of glory, and together we will go to our new home up in the sky. I like that song. Yes, the rapture of the church is the event where the church will be caught up to be with the Lord in heaven. Now, this is a mysterious promise. Jesus promised us that he would personally come again. And in John 14, we read this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus promised to come again and to receive his disciples to himself so that where he is, they could be also. In writing to the Corinthians, the apostle Paul declared this. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. A mystery is a New Testament uh, concept that refers to something that has not yet been revealed. It will be, but it's not yet been revealed. It's usually about God and his progressive revelation of himself his purposes and his plans for mankind. I'll give you an example. The Apostle Paul said this to the believers at Colossae, talking about a certain mystery. He said, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you caught that, you can see that the Old Testament prophets, Paul was telling us, did not fully comprehend what it meant that Christ would be in us. It was a mystery to them. And even the angels don't fully grasp the mysterious things concerning salvation. Here's what we read in uh, 1 Peter 1, 10 through 12, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So there are mysteries Things that the Old Testament people didn't know about. Things that the angels scratched their heads about. <laughs> and now, referring back to that passage in 1 Corinthians, we're introduced to another mystery, a never-before-revealed truth that the Apostle Paul wants us to know. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says this, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Very interesting. Now, when the Bible says here that we will all be changed, it means that there will be 
a glorious transformation, a metamorphosis will take place when Jesus comes again. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53, we read, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 1 Corinthians 15, 53. So, all believers will go through this glorious transformation at the coming of Jesus for his church at this time, at the time of the rapture. This includes believers who have already died and are in the grave. And it also includes those who are living at the time. Now, you might say, well, what about those who have been cremated? Now, you don't worry about that. The Lord will take care of that. What about those who have been lost at sea and been eaten by fishes, their bodies? You don't worry about that. The Lord will take care. It, It will be a miracle. But the dead in Christ will rise first, the Bible says, and we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds. But that's another verse. But you don't worry about that. The Lord will take care of all of that. Now, I've heard people say this. Oh, the rapture isn't in the Bible. The word rapture is not in the Bible. Well, let's talk about that for a moment. Some people may say, I don't believe in the rapture because the word isn't in the English Bible. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, here's what we read. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Now, the word translated, um, uh, caught up in the Greek uh, language, is the word harpezo, which means to be taken away by force. It was usually used as a military term related to the taking of hostages. Now, St. Jerome, when he translated the Bible into the uh, Latin the word, uh, okay, there, oh, I'm sorry, there we have that. Uh, when he did that, when Jerome translated it to the, the Vulgate, he translated the word harpazo as rapture in Latin. And so that's where we get the word rapture. It comes from there. In other words, it is in the Bible. It's just not in Greek and it's not in English, it's in Latin. So that's, uh, it is there. Now, <clears throat> there's an interesting thing that we have to keep in mind, I, I think, and that is this issue of Jesus coming as a thief in the night. Sometimes when we read the Bible, the second coming of Christ seems to be obvious and everybody sees it and everybody knows it's coming. But then sometimes it seems secretive. It speaks about it as being uh, secretive. Jesus said that when he came for his church, he would arrive unexpectedly. The world will have no idea that such an event is about to occur. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, we read, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, there's been many movies and things about this. A lot of people have talked about it. Usually what happens in the movie portrayals is they'll have people all of a sudden just disappear. And somebody's walking down the street, and they disappear. Somebody's driving a car, and they just disappear. It was pointed out to me by one preacher, and I I had never heard this before, and I've been looking at it, thinking about it. I'm not really sure. We are told that the transformation will take place. The metamorphosis will take place in the twinkling of an eye. But it doesn't specifically say that when we rise to meet the Lord in the air, that that will be done in the twinkling of an eye. Wouldn't it be interesting if that was done the way Jesus ascended into heaven? at his ascension on the Mount of Olives. The disciples watched as he lifted up and went went into the clouds. 
Wouldn't that be something if we as believers were transformed? At the t- when the trumpet sounds, we're transformed. And then our friends and relatives and everybody else watch us as we just ascend up into the clouds to be with the Lord. I don't know. That was an interesting thought. I never had that before. I don't know what it means. But as I indicated to you before, the rapture could occur um, at any moment, at any time. We call it the soon and imminent return of the Lord. We can never know the exact day or hour. And people get in trouble when they try to figure out what the exact day and exact hour is. They get in trouble when they try to figure out the year. We don't know. You know what? We can never know the exact day or hour. The angels don't know. Nor did the son in the time of his earthly limitations know. Does he know now? I'm not sure. But only the father really knows when Jesus will return for his church. So it's a mystery. But it could happen at any moment. It could happen tonight. The trumpet could sound. We could be transformed. And we could be with each other as we're going up into the clouds. I do know that the Bible says the dead in Christ will precede us. So they'll rise first, but then we'll go to be with them. But only the Father knows when this will happen exactly. But now let's talk about the progression of end time events one more time as we look at this. First of all, the rapture of the church is part of this end time progression of events. And... uh, The rapture precedes the actual second coming of Christ. This is when he returns again and his church is established uh, on this earth, his kingdom. So the rapture, as we've previously noted, the rapture is a distinct event from the second coming of Christ. Although you might be able to say they're all part of one thing, but there's a seven year period of time in there after the rapture, before Jesus comes and all the world sees him. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, here's what we read. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Well, that's not a secret coming. That's after the tribulation, Jesus comes again. And another verse, we read this in Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Oh, that's interesting. When he comes, we'll appear with him in glory. What do you do with that? Well, I think it's easy to understand here. Here's what we have. The second coming of Christ will be to establish God's kingdom upon the earth. But prior to the second coming, there will be an event, a pre-event that we call the rapture. And this is when the church will be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. And the thing that is the most precious about this particular promise that is related to the rapture is that when it occurs, when the rapture occurs, we Christians will ever be with the Lord. We won't leave his side again. So when he comes at his second coming, we're right there with him. We're at his side. So, so we clearly understand it. There is a difference between coming for and coming with. So let's finish up with those two words, for and with. All right? The distinct difference between Jesus coming for his church and Jesus coming with his church. 
He comes for his church at the rapture. He comes with his church at the second coming. So we have that there. And we'll close with this verse and then I'll let you ask any questions and I'll do my best to answer them if you have any. Revelation 22, 20, the second to last verse in the Bible. He that which testified these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Come what? Come quickly. Come quickly. We look forward to the soon and imminent return of the Lord. We look forward to the rapture of the church when Jesus comes again to receive us to himself. And there we will ever be with the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you that you have not left us alone in this world, blind to what is going to happen in the future. Lord, we know that you will come again to receive us unto yourself. We believe in the rapture of the church, the catching away, and Lord, we say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I ask this in your name. Amen. Amen.